Good morning and welcome. Next Sunday, of course, is Easter Sunday, and we will not be able to gather, as has been our custom, to celebrate our Lord's resurrection. But I promise you that when we are allowed to come back together for public worship, we are going to have both a Palm Sunday celebration and an Easter Sunday celebration. In all four of the congregations that are a part of LSIM. During this week, which is Holy Week, we are going to have special services available online for Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. But today is Palm Sunday, or Sunday of the Passion. And the service this morning is going to begin with the triumphal entry. In just a moment, I am going to read the processional gospel. The children's sermon is going to focus upon that triumphal procession into the city of Jerusalem. But then as the service progresses, the focus is going to become more and more on our Lord's passion and crucifixion. So we begin. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon him and to suffer death on the cross, that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethagy on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her cold by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Good morning, kids. How are you today? Today is a very special Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. The wait is finally over. I already got my milk and my cookies because I can't wait for Santa now wait a minute, we're not waiting for Santa Claus to arrive today, are we? Today we're waiting for someone else. We're waiting for Jesus. We're waiting for Jesus to arrive, not at our houses, but in Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. And he's riding to Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. And just like with Santa Claus on, Sunday, uh, on Christmas Eve, a lot of people are excited that Jesus is coming to town. And just like Santa Claus, Jesus has a big gift for us and for them as well. But that's about where the similarities end, isn't it? 
Because unlike Santa Claus, Jesus is not asking us for anything. Not even for a glass of milk and some cookies. And he definitely doesn't need us to be on a nice list either. Jesus comes to Jerusalem because Jesus wants to let people know that God loves them and that God wants to help them be good and happy no matter how bad they have been or no matter how sad they feel or how bad in general. That's what Jesus comes and that's why people are excited. They are so excited that they put down palm branches onto the roads. That's why today is called Palm Sunday. Now, let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you love us and that you want to help us be good no matter how bad or how mad or how sad we feel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along the way. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, 
we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is recorded in the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The servant of the Lord expresses absolute confidence in his final vindication, despite the fact that he has been struck and spit upon. This characteristic of the servant played an important role in the early church's understanding of suffering, death, and the resurrection of Jesus. The prophet writes, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is recorded as Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I've heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second reading is recorded in the second chapter of Philippians. Paul uses an early Christian hymn to help us comprehend Jesus' obedient selflessness on the cross and how God has made Christ Lord over all reality. The perspective of the cross becomes the way we rightly understand God, Christ, and our own lives, and fellowship within the community of Christ. Paul writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, 27th chapter. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink, mixed with gall, and after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments amongst themselves by casting lots. And sitting down, they began to keep watch over him there. 
and above his head they put the charge against him which read this is Jesus the king of the Jews at that time two robbers were crucified with him one on the right and one on the left and those passing by were hurling insults at him waging wagging their heads and saying you who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him and saying, He saved others and he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now. If he delights in him, for he said, I am the son of God. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. And now from the sixth hour, darkness fell upon the land until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who were standing there, when they heard it, began saying, This man is calling Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and taken a sponge. He filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him as a drink. But the rest of them said, Let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks split. The tombs were opened, and many bodies of the holy ones who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of their tombs after his resurrection, entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion and those who were with him, keeping guard over Jesus, when they saw the earthquake and the things that were happening, became frightened. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Let us pray. Come, O come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit that we might be recreated and that you might recreate the face of this earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in your consolations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Whatever you may think about Jesus' death, um, as it was happening, it oppress, impressed virtually no one, except perhaps a Roman centurion and his men. What is a centurion? A centurion is somebody who is in charge of about 80, 100, eh, maybe even as many as 200 people to whom he is basically the dad, the father away from home. He is to, responsible for them. He is to care for them, supply for them and lead them. He has to be a man of valor, a man of some courage because he is expected, though he is an officer, to lead his people from the front, not by order, but by example. And this guy has spotted something very, very important. That which the, the people of Israel's time used as a mocking, he is the son of God, that's what he said he recognized as something that was actually true. He has looked, he has looked at what Jesus was doing, and he has come to the conclusion, this is, this is supernatural. This only makes sense if this one is the Son of God. He knows as one who is a man of war that Jesus' sacrifice was quite obviously not from this world, because no one would have asked it of him. No, he realized that there was something that was playing itself out on a higher plane, a plane that he did not know and he did not understand was working itself out right there in front of his eyes. It made sense to him only in one way, 
this man that I have hung on that cross has to be the one who is obedient to the will of God in heaven and the only one who would be willing to do this would be the Son of God himself. It's the only explanation that he can come up with. This man, surely he is the Son of God. For no one else would have done this. No one else could have accomplished it. It was done in obedience. It must therefore be something that was and is done for the sake of a plan in heaven that I know nothing about, but that this man trusted in. That is the insight of a lonely Roman centurion at the foot of Jesus' cross, somebody who couldn't carry, care terribly well or much about the idea of what a Messiah is and what a Messiah is supposed to do, one who probably had heard that somebody had ridden on a donkey into Jerusalem and people had been putting their clothes in his way. It is, after all, Palm Sunday. All y'all, it's Palm Sunday, a day to sing Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it is the other end of Holy Week when the centurion looks at it and says, you're right, it is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Only one who did so, is so, and is that, would have done what I am seeing up on this cross. He knows little of the little skirmishes that Jesus had with the authorities in Jesus' days and times. He knows very little and cares not so all what happens over at the temple. The fact that Jesus has been at the temple preaching and besting all the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Nah, not much to him. But this obedience that bought your salvation, this, this grabbed him. And rightly it should. Rightly it should. You see, it is Jesus' obedience, obedience of the call, or to the call of the Father, that all must be done to save this creation, these people, these sinners. It's obedience to the call of God's own heart that says we must have compassion here. We must have compassion on these people that brings us to Palm Sunday when we scream with the, with the heavenly host, Hosanna to the son of Davis. But we also realize that Hosanna to the son of David and holy, holy, holy is sung before the throne of God where the order was given. We must have compassion, even compassion to the depth of the cross, even compassion to the depth of lowering ourselves and not claiming equality with heaven for but a little while, but being and living in solidarity here on earth with those who dwell here on earth and are mired in sin, mired in sorrow and grief, mired in fear, mired in trepidation and questions about what I will do tomorrow and what will tomorrow bring to us? That's a question that all of us ask ourselves quite often these days as we sometimes are gathered behind locked doors almost like the disciples on the upper room, keeping out everything that is outside. No one, no one has peeked into heaven and has come back other than Jesus. But here is our glimpse of heaven, even and behind shut doors, and even in our exile that has been imposed upon us right now. 
Yes, Jesus is the one, if we remember the stories of the resurrection, who shows up behind the locked doors of the disciples to say, peace be with you here, my friends. Peace be with you. The same one who, after Thursday of Holy Week, pretty much does the entirety of salvation all by himself. There is no one who sticks by him. There is no one who will walk it with him because only he can walk the way of sorrows so that we do not have to repeat it. Let me repeat that. Jesus walks the way of sorrows. You do not. My friends, I know that for many of you, it's a lonely time. Um, I've become very, very good friends with my cats, their favorite toys. I know where they're hidden even when they don't because I've watched them so much that I know where they go. I've become good friends with the spider who is building quietly a nest in the corner of my study at home. In short, I'm tired of being at home. And I know that except for some forays into places where I get to record stuff, there's not much to do. I, like you and many others in our country, live in my own upper room by myself in hiding. And I, with you, need to come again to the realization that it is into hiding like that into places locked, into places of fear, into places of frightened huddling that Jesus breaks and says, Peace, I am with you, and I remain with you always. I haven't abandoned you. All that I have done, I have done so that the mercy of the Father, the compassion of the Father may be shown to you and even though you live apart from one another now and out of fellowship, know that you are all there together with me. For certainly your souls as they dwell with me one at a time all dwell with me, in me, together, even though you are apart. We are one in Jesus Christ, even though we are in our own upper rooms. Make the best of the time that has been given to you in the upper room that you now occupy, brothers and sisters. Make the best of the times. The world is full of wonder to draw us to our Lord Jesus Christ. As I watch Harold weave the net up in the corner, yeah, I've named, I've named the spider, just bear with me. As I watch that, I'm reminded of the delicate nature of life, the delicate nature of our togetherness. I'm reminded of God's great gift, that in spite of the sin that all keeps us apart and in spite of the fragileness of life, he has made one people out of us. I live in awe that something so simple and something so disgusting as a spider can make something so beautiful, but it reminds me that sometimes the weakest things in life will drive us into, into greater appreciation for the cross of Jesus. This togetherness that is to me today represented by the spider web in the corner of my room reminds me of this, this centurion here. He recognized in something that was not, that was despicable, eternity. Brothers and sisters, eternity surrounds you. Its hints surround you. That even in your souls, as you grasp the longing to be with one another, as you grasp the longing to be again at the altar, to kneel again, receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, to sing again with full lungs the praises of God with one another. That's holy longing. 
Recognize in that the calling of the Holy Spirit that is already given to you in your baptism, saying, I'm here, I know what you're longing for, and your time is coming. I am coming. I will make all things new. I will bring salvation, and I will bring you a new body of Christ when this ends. We look at the cross of Christ with the centurion and we ponder, what do we see? I pray that all of us see as we look up the Son of God in full obedience, the mercy of God in full strength, the compassion of God in all its depth, and our salvation in all its beauty. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in these days, open our eyes and allow us, in spite of all that is and isn't, to shout this Sunday, Hosanna to the Son of Davis. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. And amen. Say I am strong. Let the
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed the whole world and drawn all people to yourself. We praise and adore you for your great sacrifice and love. We come before you humbly asking that you give these holy gifts to all we lift before you in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, by your cross and precious blood, save and redeem your church through its ministry of word sacrament fellowship and service draw all people to yourself we pray for your church everywhere throughout the world to be a light to the nations bless our bishops and their assistants missionaries pastors and deacons and the lutheran saints in ministry that you continue to unite us in our proclamation of the gospel Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, by your cross and precious blood, save and redeem those who suffer for the sake of your name and those who risk danger to proclaim the gospel to those who do not know you. By their faithful witness, draw all people to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, by your cross and precious blood, as we enter into the Holy Week, save and redeem all who seek to walk the hard path of discipleship. Through your willingness to take up their cross and follow you, draw all people to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, by your cross and precious blood, grant patience to teachers and students and parents as they learn new ways of delivering and receiving education. We pray that you be with all children, especially those enduring illness, poverty, or abuse, or violence. Through their innocent praise of your goodness, draw all people to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, by your cross and precious blood, Save and redeem those who stand in harm's way on our behalf. By their labors, establish places of safety and calm. Save and redeem the people in every land and nation. By the guidance of your Holy Spirit, establish your peace in every land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, by your cross and precious blood, save and redeem all who walk through the dark valleys of suffering, sorrow, and death. We pray for medical teams treating patients with COVID-19. Comfort and assure those who might feel isolated or alone, and lead us to share messages of hope and courage. Be with those who long for your healing touch, especially those we name before you now. Let the light of your tender mercy shine through all who care for them in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, by your cross and precious blood, you have saved and redeemed those who have died trusting in your promises. Now keep us steadfast in faith, patient in suffering, generous in serving, and loving in fellowship until you have drawn all people to yourself and have bestowed upon all the redeemed the fullness of your forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear and graciously answer our prayers, O blessed Savior, 
according to the mercy and favor that you have for all your people. As we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation, holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring. Bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>